Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons or maximum. More like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me today, we have the band back together. We have Stuart. Hello, everyone. We've got DC Danes. G'day, dudes. How are you? And we've got Hawk. Hey, guys. Glad to be back. So tonight we're going to be touching on a few topics, starting with the most recent episode of Doctor Who, the second last episode of Season 8, I think it was. Season 8? Are we up to Season 8? Yes, yes, season yes eight. we are. Wow, just wow. Crap, that means I've missed six seasons. <laughs> <laughs> you've really got to catch up on this stuff, man. Oh, you're going to hate what's going to happen now. I didn't play that at the time. <laughs> oh, you're going to hate. Might I recommend DC that you go tune out? <laughs> So, uh, uh, I'm sort of going. See ya. Uh, after that, we have this. We'll do a chat about the Stargate movie, which just turned twenty. So this is the original Stargate movie, not the TV show. We won't be talking about the TV show. I'm kicking that in the butt now. And then, last but not least, we'll move on to Marvel versus DC. What Marvel does well, what DC does well, and what they can learn from each other. So, I'm looking forward to that. So let's kick it off with that. Doctor Who's most recent episode. What did we think? Were we surprised? Going with Stuart first. Oh, Moffat is a mad, mad genius. I loved it and loved it. Um, what I liked you... how it started, because I wasn't actually expecting that start at all. It completely threw me. To um to see Danny getting killed or potentially killed off, we don't know. Yeah, that 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 was definitely as soon as I saw him walking towards the road on the phone, and the phone went silent. I was like, bastards! It's you, like you, you pull the George bastard. Martin. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've heard the joke, haven't you? George R. R. Martin, Josh Whedon, and um Stephen Moffat walk in a room, and everyone, everyone you know dies. He- Everyone you know and love dies instantly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. um, David, what was your thoughts? Oh. Well, ironically, I'd had a discussion a couple of weeks earlier about the potential for a female doctor. Um, while I would have enjoyed that, I was not expecting them to pull this one. So, for those who haven't seen it, the who Missy actually is is one hell of a curveball and unless you are paranoid and somewhat schizo you're not going to get it it is a pure stroke of genius and I can't state enough how much I really enjoyed that twist what did you think of the whole um, magic water or dark water or heavy water or whatever the hell they called it I had a feeling that they were Oh, so, Cybermen or something along those lines. As soon as I saw was, them, that was I knew that was Cybermen. The moment I saw them, but it, it was just one of those sort of things. Where it's like, why would you go into a room with skeletons in water and not have alarm bells go me me run away? Especially run when away. They, especially when they, they say that the water will only allow organic matter to be seen. So yeah. if the only thing organic in there is the skeleton, why are you not having warning? Warning, run. Yeah. Symbols flash up. Yeah. So, the question is, and this was left hanging at the end of the episode, will Danny engage... Push the, the button? Push the button. <laughs> what do we think? I get the feeling that he's thinking that if he pushes the button, it'll be better for Clara, thus he will do it. Never mind it being the dumbest thing he can do. But... It won't be the first time that they've had a, a break through the programming of the 
um, Cybermen. They did it back in the Rose Tyler era. Yeah, they had um, the uh, the commander from Torchwood, the original Torchwood hub, break the programming and stand at the tower and did this year. She was like crying oil or something. Like, yeah. I did this for Queen and Country. I did this for Queen and Country. And it's like, um, okay. <laughs> Balance much? So... Not to mention, we also had the Clara um, take in control, Clara Brain in control of the Dalek. Yeah, that was that was under Smith. Different. Oh, the Asylum of the Daleks. Yeah, that was good. I um, I think he's gonna press the button. However, I think it'll be at the like the end of the of the of the final episode, or that he either presses it, he turns into a Cyberman, but he keeps his personality. Mm, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't I'm, think I'm not so. Sure where I think... Going. I think if if he does press the button, he's full Cyberman, no if ands or buts, and the whole downloading people into the Gallifreyan hard drive thing. I don't know how many terabytes that thing is, but I'll take three. If nothing else, it'll be handy for our computers. Yeah. So yeah. So and just... hey, who knows? We might be able to get. Get the if it's Gallifrey t- hardware, it might have um, time circuits built into it, so we might be able to get the next Battlefield game before it's even announced. Or better yet, if it's Time Lord technology, we might actually have a stable way of getting HBO. That one goes that'll out. never happen. <laughs> or even better, we can finally get Republic Commando Two. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that's probably pushing things a little. <laughs> but just a smidgen on the pushing there. Uh, so yeah, but anyway, now the big reveal, as promised, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear what I'm about to say, skip forward about two minutes and you should jump almost straight into the start of the Stargate discussion. The Mistress, the Master. Wow. Wow. Curve balls are us. Oh yes. Now I love it. It was hinted under Smith that they can swap genders when they regenerate, and to be perfectly honest, I'm a bit of a hypocrite when it comes to gender swapping time lords. I don't. I actually like the master swapping, assuming that she is the master, assuming that she was telling the truth about that. Which, considering how batshit mental she is, is not impossible. Um then I've got no issue with the Master becoming female. But the hypocrisy comes in where I wouldn't really like that to happen explicitly to the Doctor. If you know what I mean? Like, it's... It's, yeah. It's hard to explain it. I know I'm a hypocrite, and I know I'm going to take flack for it. Thoughts? Uh, I guess I'll go. Um, I absolutely love it. I love that we have a female a, a mistress, as I should say. And I saw uh, actually after the episode, there's a really interesting um, theory someone had. Is that um, Missy is is the master, or um, the mistress, but she's also the Rani as well, and that there possibly could be like a conflicting battle between her or something. So what you're saying is that Missy, uh, sorry, the Master and Rani are actually the same character, but with split personalities. Yeah. Yeah. Considering the the beat of drums and all that crazy batshitness under Tenant, I guess anything's really possible at this point. All right. All right. Anyway, I'm going to jump off to the first break. We're going to. Oh, one before Wait. we do go. Yep. Still on this topic, before we do disappear to a break. Yes. Um, while it is a f- fantastic thing that they've done, I just can't figure out what could, they could possibly pull out next. Well, so that's because lack of imagination on your behalf, though, isn't it? Uh, possibly, <laughs> but we've also got to take into account that how many regens has the Master had? Yeah, at the end of the Time War, he was given a full, uh, new full set. We don't know how many more he's got from that, but we know he's had at least three now. Yeah, they, they had um, Professor Yano, 
the blonde master dude. I don't know if blonde resurrected master dude counts as a second regeneration of that one. Like Tenet's split personality regeneration counts. Um, we don't know how much Time Lord regeneration energy burnt through doing Kamehameha against... Um, oh, now I've forgotten his name. Uh, da, da, da. Rassilon. Rassilon. At the end of that episode, we don't know how much sort of energy he burnt away, but it's safe to say he's got quite a few left. Yeah. And don't forget, we've just had... The uh, Doctor has just basically had his clock reset. Exactly. The, I think there's actually a better question, and one that we haven't touched on, and I'll just touch on it really quickly. Get your thoughts, then we'll jump off the break. Um, how did the Master get off Gallifrey? Gallifrey is locked in a pocket universe. Well, sort of. How did he get back to bloody England? That's the point. I think it was... Uh, well, I don't know how he got back to England, but I think the way he got off of Gallifrey... And I saw this as another theory, is um, that uh, the gap in the wall during the Christmas special, when um, Gallifrey, when the Time Lords gave the Doctor his new, the whole new regeneration, it's difficult to escape through that. Yeah, that's a fair point. Other than that, I have nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's the only way I can think of it happening. That or there's another gap somewhere that he's managed to sneak through like Loki sneaking back to Earth sort of thing. But, yeah. Anyway, the food for thought. We're going to go away to break. I'm going to play the Stargate trailer to get you guys in the mood for the Stargate segment. So, we shall see you in about three minutes or so. Have fun. Before... Before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragons, smugglers, and thieves, will they prevail? WWW the Star Crystal, remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. It has been buried for thousands of years. A mystery. A secret. A threshold to the future. Where'd you find this? I've, I've never seen anything like this. One man will break the code and open the door. Well, I should read Stargate. That was in front of us the whole time. The other will lead the way. Why are you here? I'm here in case you succeed. Jackson's identify the seventh symbol. Backup storage. Reserve power. On. What is that? It's your Stargate. We've opened a doorway to a world we know nothing about. The beam has locked itself onto a point somewhere in the Kalium galaxy. It's on the other side of the known universe. Your turn now. They prepared for danger. Begin final evacuation. They expected the unknown. Stabilizing system. Initiating commencement sequence. But they could never have imagined this. shoot anything that comes down that ramp. Your job here is to realign the Stargate. Can you do that or not? I can't. What the hell is going on? My orders were simple. Track down signs of any possible danger. Well, I found some. I can't make it work without the seven symbol. Seven minutes. Now, the most amazing discovery of our time. Yes. Wait for me. Is about to become the most extraordinary adventure of all time. Kurt Russell, James Spader, Jay Davidson. 
Stargate. A Roland Emmerich film. Hello, and welcome back to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and everyone is still floating around. So we are moving on to the Stargate topic. Um, so we will be talking about Stargate the movie. Came out about 20 years ago, close enough to it. Um, so, what do you guys think of the Stargate movie if you've seen it? And if you haven't seen it, I kill you! <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen it by this point, then what rock have you been hiding under? All of them! <laughs> Probably at that point. <laughs> all of the boulders. <laughs> uh, so yeah, anyway, um, I must admit I did like the Stargate movie. It's it on its own as a sci-fi movie, ignoring the TV show, ignoring all that extra stuff that came after it. I don't think it's that bad overall for what it was, which was a very low budget, relatively speaking, sci-fi movie, which had never really been done well. And all things considered, I think they did pretty good. Except on the Blu-ray version, which I've got, you can see the wires that hold the Death Gliders in the sky. <laughs> which I noticed today on the 60-inch TV, and I was like, wow, he didn't even attempt to remove them. That's so bad. <laughs> so. Oh, that's good. That's great. I have not even seen that. I have to go find that now. <laughs> So there's just a couple of shots close up on the the, the death glows as they're flying over um, one of the cities in Abydos, and you can see the wires that they're, that they're sort of moving along, and you're like, "Wow, <laughs> why, <laughs> why did they do that?" And it's like, how many times have I watched this thing? Around once every three or four months. How have I, I not noticed that? <laughs> I've actually got an interesting. Um thing up about this i've just found them the budget and the box office numbers for it okay what do we got so the budget was 55 million and this is the movie this is the movie not the tv series yeah the box office what drew in 196 million that is terrifyingly impressive yeah so so as a lot of you know it's actually getting a reboot soon um, oh, I'm so happy with that. So, and as a lot of fans, uh, um, put it this way, pissed. <laughs> That's a nice way to put that. that oh, there's going to be fans pissed with never those reboots. Yeah, I know. See, I have no issue with reboots. I've got no issue with them at all, as long as they're done well. Shit. And as long as they're done to... It's, okay. As long as they're done well and as long as they're done consistently, if you know what I mean. Um... So, like, the Star Trek reboots, on their own, I've got... A lot of fans hate them, especially hardcore Star Trek fans. I'm not one of them. I actually don't mind the Star Trek reboots. Um, as long as you view them as their own separate thing, which is what they are, then um, the Stargate reboot is going to be its own separate thing as well. If the the movie from in um, 1994 was already separate enough from the TV show to keep it separate anyway. There's so many differences. There's web pages devoted to the differences between the TV show and the movie. And um, it's for me, it's not that much of a stretch when you reboot this thing to keep it totally separate and have the original three movies like it was meant to be. So, yeah, I'm look, definitely looking forward to that. Um... What I find funny is that Stargate wound up bigger than the movie, than the movie it was created to fund. Yes. Which was Independence Day. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I must admit, Independence Day versus Stargate, they are two totally different beasts. But I would still take Independence Day. It was a bloody good movie. I'm not, <laughs> I'm oh, not yeah. slamming Independence Day. I love Independence Day. Yeah. I just find it funny that Independence Day wound up less in- liked by the general public than the movie that it was that was created to fund it. Yeah, but Stargate was one of those rare, unique concepts, if you know what I mean. 
Um, the, the, the Stargate itself has spawned a whole... Se- the, the book it was based on, Chariots of the Gods, I think it was. Um, is that right? That might be wrong. I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, nerd slap me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nerd slap me in the comment section. I'll be sure to read every single none of them. Um, and... <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but is, isn't isn't the big thing about Stargate? I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. I was yeah. getting the iPad from out the front. But um, the big thing for me was the the possibility that we were using technology that was found on Earth, and it had that that oh my god, you know, maybe the government really has found this shit. Yeah, that, and that, that's what I was that's what I was that's sort of getting to. Sort of what's f- throwing this idea out there, and it's like. The the things that are real in life are actually a lot easier to write about than the things that aren't because they're so much more far fetched. It's yeah. just insane. You wouldn't even dream some of the things that are real. Yeah. Uh, well, it's like the the Stargate series is us f- in nineteen ninety four technically, um, with Earth made weapons, Earth made guns, stepping out into the universe and realizing that we are we are not the top of the food chain like we think we are. We're actually somewhere near a brand about pond scum. Um, <laughs> there's a lot around <laughs> you know, on galactic standards anyway and I, I, I love the idea of this ancient piece of technology that is literally be, uh, from before our time as a, as a society before our, civilized, our species became relatively civilised and we're now discovering this thing and using it to go out and reach out to those that sort of did it it's sort of like very few movies had that sort of element a lot of them had aliens turn up destroy a lot of national monuments because they're very high powered military targets apparently and then we kick their ass or random thing falls from the sky and wipes us out or it's very rare that there's such a relatively unique sort of storyline that has that potential if you know what I mean I'm, I'm rambling it was, again it was the armour the armour did it for me the um, Jaffa armour that went all the way up through head case of everything else that was just absolutely insane yeah you know it's yeah. as soon as I seen that I was like I'm hooked <laughs> stuff everything else <laughs> the armour did it for me yeah the, the Horus uh, guards the, 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 yeah. uh, the Anubis guards they were in the movie they're not Horus guards. Mm. They're Anubis guards. Um, they had this. I always thought they were Horus guards because they have the same headpiece. Uh, there, there's a couple of Horus guard. There's well, a couple of Horus guards, and but the main guy was an Anubis guard. He actually had an an Anubis head, as opposed to a hawk head. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Okay, yeah. I was supposed to watch it this week. I just didn't get time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, was, um, that sounds there a lot was like a... excuses to me. <laughs> But there was an Anubis well, just guy. My iPad. I don't care. <laughs> Did D- DC the excuses guy? <laughs> I'm sorry. You must have them. like pages of these written out. Uh, no, they're all in my head. <laughs> I'm a writer. <laughs> Pulls them out as <laughs> needed. Blow out. Yeah. Uh, there's actually really cool. Um, there's an Anubis guard at um, at a prison uh, Comic Con, and it was really amazing. Yeah, there's there's some photos of him that. up on um the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page, which I have yet to actually plug. So this is the <laughs> third episode I've only mentioned in the Facebook page now because I'm retarded. So if oh, you're listening right. to You've this me and you times. haven't <laughs> been to the Facebook page, go to Facebook and look for Save Sci-Fi on Facebook. We're the one with the black logo with the sun setting and it looks really cool. Um, so go check us out, give us a like, and make sure you check back daily because at the moment Facebook is screwing us and not showing any of our posts to anybody, and it is really starting to I get annoying. I did notice that, because um, I went and seen that they had all these verse, really cool versus things that you've been doing up, and none of them ever show up on my feed. Yeah. Uh, we, we've gone from, okay, before Facebook became public and on the stock market and stuff like that, our average post reach was about 1,000, 1,200. Then Facebook went public. Then our average reach dropped to about 500, best case scenario, and we were bombarded with, if, oh look, you've reached this many people, it's doing really, really well. If you want to reach more people, then give us 20 bucks, 50 bucks, however much per post, and we'll mm. show it to more people. And to me, that is the equivalent of 
the Facebook turning into the mafia and going, yeah, that's a, that's a really nice looking post you got there, see? We would, it'd be the same if nobody could see it, see? You better give me some money, see? So I can show it to others, see? <laughs> That sounds like Peter Griffin from the Mafia. <laughs> I have no idea. Mm. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, literally all that came out of here was like, now it's just Peter Griffin and the Mafia, right? I think. <laughs> no, I, I seen Looney Tunes, I'm sorry. I just couldn't oh, yeah, yeah. Mafia <laughs> I could go there as well. <laughs> so, and, <laughs> and recently it's been yeah. getting worse. We're actually right, right, right. We're down to, on average, reaching only about 150 people per post which is why I brought in the like and share rules on a lot of our posts, because the more like and shares a picture gets, the higher the reach is, and that's not just yeah. for us to get higher reach, it's for the people who are out there who are liking and sharing the post, they've got a higher chance of seeing that post later. So we always mm. see the same about a dozen or so people that are um, jumping on and commenting and sharing and liking, and it's always the same sort of probably... 30 or 40 people that are doing it and I had reached the point where I know a lot of their a lot of them by name and I've even added a couple of them to my friends list on Facebook just so I can have a chat to them outside of the group and yeah it's just sort of getting very frustrating from a page point of view to try and bring up all this good content and then just have Facebook go and no one sees it yeah I actually use my personal page now more than I use my Facebook page because 500 friends see my posts where with my Facebook page, I'm lucky if 36 people see my posts. Yeah. Well, so I, it's just ridiculous. And it's an even bigger issue than that because I've seen it. Um, the One of the atheist pages that I follow, he's got about 150,000 likes on Facebook. And I was listening to his podcast the other day. And they're trying to get $3,000 per post out of him. This is a dude that does it for the, the fun of it, like what we do. Um and they want three thousand dollars per post, so that more than five thousand, sorry, more than yeah, five thousand people will see it. And I haven't seen a post from him in probably two years. I've got, actually got to physically go to the top of the page, type in his page, and go to it in order to see the post stuff he's posted. And so that's really sort of frustrating on a, for a lot of ways as well. Anyway, we've gone a slightly off topic tad a little bit, mm. so. Yeah, we're talking, talking about Stargates. Yeah, Stargates. Do you, do you know the best special effects they ever do is when the Stargate closes and chops someone in half? I just love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did well, they do that in the movie? I can't no, remember. That, that, they, they didn't do that in the movie. That in the was, movie, the Stargate uh, actually sucked you in. If you, you, oh. you, you sort of half passed in it, it sort of would pull you in and push you out the other end. Um, so you actually so see that. Eat, eat you out and shit you out. Yeah, pretty much. And, mm. and that's one of those sort of the big differences. The way the Stargate dials, the way the Stargate acts is totally different in the movie compared to the TV show. So, yeah. The only time in the Stargate ever acted with the sucking force that was in commonly in the movie was in the Black Hole episode. Yeah, the Black Hole episode. Mm. So Then it really sucked. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, mm. I'm going to jump us off to another ad break really quick. I'm going to play the audio from the ad for Star Trek Horizon, one of our, uh, one of the groups that we sort of support as much as we can. Um, it's looking absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry that this is an audio-only podcast, but we'll have to, if you want to watch the video that goes with this, you've really got to bring it up on YouTube. It is worth watching. So, I will... Um, I will start that now, and I will this catch you is on the Admiral other side of the break. Turn over the fugitive, and the Romulan Star Empire may consider showing you leniency. Go to hell! You and your crew have been through a lot the past six months. I wish I could say that it gets easier, but it never does. Six months on a mission to bring back Tamar on a whim that it might change the tide of the war in our favor. The issue is the intel that she brought us. The Romulans are building a weapon of mass destruction. Two light years from Earth. 
We're getting telemetry from the Samir, the Vulcan ship that was sent out. Five ships, two base structures. Obviously, this must be stopped at all costs. All hands, this is the captain. I know that we are preparing to go into a dangerous situation, but we have done the work and we are ready. I couldn't be more proud to be serving with you. Lieutenant, maximum war. Are you successful in recapturing the fugitive? The Earth vessel Enterprise intervened at the last moment. The fugitive must be stopped at all costs. Whatever it takes. Mr. Captain, all hands, abandon ship. Who we are. What we are. We should never lose that. Vulcans. Romulans. Humans. Are any of us really that different? Bridge, that last hit knocked out the port in a cell. Best I could give you is impulse. 22 casualties have reported so far, sir. 15 fatal. I want you to know what it feels like when your world burns like mine did. That is the only reason you are still alive. And we're back. Welcome to the back to the Save Sci-Fi podcast. I'm here with Stuart, DC, Danes, and Hawk, and we're moving on to the final segment: Marvel versus DC Comics. Which one does their TV shows, movies, c- cartoons, that sort of thing, better? Which one's got the better storytelling model, and what can they learn from each other? Uh, okay, it looks like David's really keen to say something. I mean, Hawk is really keen to say something. Hawk, what are your thoughts? <laughs> when it death, comes down death, to it... Death on the radio. <laughs> Mainly... <laughs> that, that'll get ratings up. DC can learn from mostly from Marvel in the fact that, by God, they need a unified universe. They don't have that at the moment, and every attempt they've made so far has just failed. What I would... They keep putting different directors in charge of the movies. Yeah, what I would love to see is bringing... Because we've got... DC really, at the moment, only has... They've... For their movies, they've got the Batman vs. Superman movie. For TV shows, they've got Gotham, they've got Arrow, and they've got Flash, and that's about it. DC does have an Aquaman movie coming, and a couple other movies, superhero movies coming after Batman vs. Superman. But yeah, that's right now, that's their potential universe. I would love them to see them bring Gotham in line with Flash and Arrow, but have Gotham set the appropriate amount of time before Flash and Arrow, if you know what I mean. Because I know Gotham is made as to be very ambiguous time-wise. There's a lot of old cars, but with mobile phones, it's it's intentionally ambiguous time-wise. Um, but I'd love to see them sort of try and bring those three shows together into one sort of universe and then bring those into the Batman versus Superman universe at the same time because they've got Arrow and Flash already established they've got a Superman that's already established they're bringing a Batman into that Superman storyline they're setting that Superman Batman storyline up as the Justice League it's not the Justice League without the Flash and if you've got two different Flashes on screen at the same time yeah it it can be a bit confusing I'm not saying it will be confusing, I'm saying it can it can be. And I'm sure it would not be that hard. Like, okay, contractually, it would be an absolute fecking nightmare. Because they've sold the rights to these TV studios to make a Flash and Arrow TV show that'll be independent and they can do whatever the hell they want with. And the Batman vs. Superman movie is a totally different story, totally different setting. And bringing them together would not be the easiest task in the universe, but it would be doable. 
It'd be like retconning the current Spider-Man into the Marvel movies, which is rumoured to be happening, but that's been rumoured to be happening since Iron Man 1, so who knows. <laughs> yeah, well, they couldn't exactly do the Tobey Maguire version in. Yeah, we, we are very, very glad that he did not do that. And they're also supposed to be fitting at some point. I think it was Avengers three. They're supposed to t- bring Wolverine into the Avengers cast. Um, no, that's Hugh Jackman said he'd love to do it, but until Fox gives up the rights for X Men, that ain't gonna happen. And even yeah. if it does contractually, he is only allowed to do Wolverine under Fox. So while I would love to see Magneto and save, like, I'd love to see Avengers three. Or even better yet, Avengers 4, X-Men versus Avengers. That would <laughs> be the holy grail of movies. I would watch that in the cinema every time it showed. From start to finish, again and again and again and again. I would You would not get me out. They'd have to drag me out at night and throw me on the curb. And I'd stand at the door clawing at it like a zombie going, Let me back in! I want to watch it again! But, so yeah. what you need to now do is send a letter arranged, to them though. saying that. <laughs> That would work, because both studios would win. Yeah, but the, the, it's, the problem with that is the, the, the contracts and the legal deals, and it's like the like what happened to the Stargate game. It became so much legal BS that it got buried and killed off. And I see a similar sort of thing happening with Spider-Man. Spider-Man, and like I know Sony is in a bit of financial difficulties at the moment, but when is Sony not? Um, but Sony is not going to give up on Spider-Man. No chance is Sony giving Spider-Man back, not anytime soon. But we've got to... But I heard they're trying to bring him in for the Iron Man... Uh, sorry, the, the Iron Man movie. Do The Captain America Civil War movie. Because it was Captain America, Iron Man, who we know is going to be in it, and Spider-Man were the three pivotal characters in that storyline cutting out Spider-Man from the Civil War storyline, it's, yeah, it's going to be bad for those mov- that movie. If they can find a way of bringing him in and retconning him into the, the Avengers universe, then that would be really, really spectacular. It's also... Um, yeah. We'll put it past him to find a way, but probably be a bloody minor role or someone who hasn't played Spider-Man before. Yeah, um... Or a different variant of Spider-Man that's never been used in a movie. Yeah, see, knowing Marvel, Marvel's got the balls to use Sony's Spider-Man. The current Spider-Man. Because he's expressed the willingness to do quite a few Spider-Man movies. And if Sony and Marvel can come to an agreement to allow them to use that character, yes, they'll have to pay the director that created that character, character rights, the same sort of reasoning that you won't see, say, Carter and Tilk in the new Stargate movies because they have to pay the, the creators of the TV show rights to those characters. It's just not going to happen. Um, but with the Spider-Man one, they could potentially bring him in for a one movie. And even if it's only one movie, just retcon him in for that one movie, for that one story, that'll be enough to make fans sort of melt down in their seats. So, but yeah, like... like Right now, Marvel, I think, is playing a short game, relatively speaking, for its movies. They know that the the superhero bubble won't last. They know the superhero bubble's going to burst. And they're sort of gambling that it's going to burst by 2020, I think, based on their current sort of movies they're planning on bringing out. Because um, all, all the big-name movies right up to Avengers 3 is sort of 2018. Um... And after that, they haven't announced anything because who the hell plans four years in advance when you've got 20 movies to make? (laughs) Good point. (laughs) Um, Whereas DC, I think, is better set for the long term because it has these three or four different concurrent universes that are totally independent. As much as they'd be cool to have them as one, like I said earlier, I know I'm sort of backflipping on that, Um, but having them as separate, they open up a lot more doors for stories in the long run compared to Marvel because Marvel's going to burn through actors, Marvel's going to burn through characters and while we've seen them replace actors and keep the characters before, now that a lot of those characters have been sort of set up for more than a movie it's going to be a lot harder for them to get away with that. So 
yeah, that'll be sort of interesting to see where they go with that. It's like X-Men, I think, is starting to reach the end of its current era. There's not too many more X-Men movies you can do with the current actors before they turn into dust. <laughs> the exception of Wolverine. I don't know. Patrick Stewart, he has the potential to just keep on going like a bad smell. Yeah, but Patrick Stewart <laughs> is a vampire and immortal, so... Like that the... makes a scary amount of sense. <laughs> It's all that Earl Grey tea he drank on the Star Trek set. <laughs> I was just going to say he he um he sucked the souls out of them, but we'll yeah. go with yours. It sounds better. Every time he went through the transporter, they, they absorbed somebody else's soul. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. as, as a writer, uh, <laughs> caught uh, awkward very quickly. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to tear into DC a bit. It does not work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tear into DC a bit now. Right. Not you, Dan. And that's not me. It's not DC you, Dan. Oh, go for it. I love listening to DC getting torn into. <laughs> what? I don't it. like. That sounds kinky and disturbing, and we won't have it here. <laughs> uh, and I'm on the, I'm on the other end of this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I don't like with the current era is, like, we've got all the superheroes, but we don't have the psychics. Like, yeah. Like, we have, we have the, I'm going to have to unfortunately mention the really, really bad cartoon show of Teen Titans Go. (laughs) Nobody likes that show. (laughs) I know, but my kids love it. The only person I know who likes that show is my girlfriend. I feel sorry for your girlfriend. Really do. Uh, I'm pretty sure the only reason she likes it is it's Teen Titans. What the hell is wrong with your girlfriend? Wait, 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 wait. I think we're missing the obvious point here. We have He's found... Be on the radio in a... No, no, no. We have found a nerd with a girlfriend. Um, my girlfriend's a Whovian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say some girlfriend... of the... But I think here, she's listening please. to this right now. Much so. as I love her to pieces is a DC. Specifically a Teen Titan fan. So... Anyway, I don't mind the I'm old I'm probably signing Titan myself series, up to but, hell yeah. at the next BAM, but... <laughs> Sounds like fun. Oh, well. At least we'll make, before it doesn't make, make it to the um, podcast next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah so she, she's not, sit, not decided, doesn't come up to my place and decide to sit behind me while we do this next time. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, That'd be to fun topic. to slap. <laughs> back slap. to topic. There is, I've heard a rumor. Oh, okay. If No, she has confirmed that my girlfriend is actually listening. I just got a message from Facebook. <laughs> oh. I need to be careful what I say now. We actually um, have a listener. Topic, like Nightwing, so apparently, there's a rumor <laughs> that Nightwing will make a cameo in, in Arrow. Yeah, that that would be interesting. Then, but... and then to carry on with sidekicks, obviously we've got Arsenal and Arrow now. Yeah. God, I love that outfit. They did an amazing job on the Arsenal outfit. Yeah. So you've got, um... So how many actual sidekicks are there in the movies? In the TV shows and stuff? Uh, Young Justice is, uh, let's see, Superboy, Robin, well, Tim Drake Robin, uh, Nightwing Dick Grayson, uh, Miss Martian, Beast Boy, Blue Beetle, although Blue Beetle's sort of super, really, but... Uh, Kid Flash, Impulse... And this is just going off the top of my head. Uh, Artemis, Red Arrow, Arsenal, uh, Aqu- Aqualad. I forgot Aqualad. Yeah, it's 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 Aquaman related. We it's okay to forget it. It's Aquaman related. <laughs> yeah, it's but it's, but if anyway, I do, if do that, then it'll be outrageous. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do the, it. The, the big thing is though a lot of these roles can't be, I suppose, solely the main character because they just can't be carried for that long. With the sidekicks, it gives that that added dimension into your characters and that also allows your extra storyline. So I'm not sure why they're not, you know, focusing on them more. Yeah, I, I'm, like, we we do have a sidekick. We've got the sidekick in Arrow, which is, I've forgotten what he's... Arsenal. Arsenal, yeah. Wait. Roy Harper. Yeah, Roy Harper. Roy is in... This is Arrow's... season two? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> um, um, you know, he cut... Well, actually, no. What happens in season one 
is that he's yeah. introduced in season one. As... In season mm. two, and I hope no one's watched this. And spoilers for those who I haven't have... watched season two. All right. Well, so what <laughs> happens is, is he, drinks, he drinks. He drinks. He gets injected with the same stuff that um, Deathstroke has. Mirakuru. Thank you. I forgot the name. And so, uh, our, and so Oliver trains him to try and control it. What happens in, uh, for what I can guess, happens in season three, and for what happens in the comics is that Roy sort of splits off on his own. Yeah, yeah that hasn't happened yet. Currently, in season three, he's definitely acting as the sidekick, helping. Oh, definitely, yeah. Helping Arrow out, um, and um, the. The, the, then you've got um, Flash. He hasn't got sort of. What is Flash's psychic? Does Flash even have a psychic? Uh, he has Kid but... Flash and Impulse. Impulse is uh, spoilers for anyone. Impulse in Young Justice in Young Justice is Flash's grandson. Huh. And well, and Kid Flash is Wally West. Yeah. So. Um, Wally so... is. I'm trying to remember what Wally's re- uh, relation to Barry is. It's not his son. It's like a cousin They're or something. Related. They're just. I was yeah. gonna say it sounds Both like yeah. Able, every... <laughs> yeah, it's it's just that. What the hell? My phone is making. Shut up, phone. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> what the. <laughs> Your phone Talking about my fa- my Talk... phone has just decided that it is on hands free co- mode and car enable mode. Wow, that's pretty good. For... Talking about Deathstroke what? though, <laughs> do you know Deathstroke? There's a guy here in Perth that's got the outfit for Deathstroke. Absolutely freaking insane. Uh... Yeah, uh, my new Bennett's actually coming to um Adelaide and Brisbane Supernova. Yeah, yeah. He came over here and had um a photo with the guy with the Deathstroke outfit. Nice. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah I want to. I want, what I want to happen in that Q and A is that someone just walks in in the outfit, just looks at him and be like, "Slade," and just hope that he goes into character. That would be hilarious. <laughs> it would be great. Oh. Another bone I have to pick with is actors who shouldn't be superheroes. Prime example: Green Lantern. Yes, yeah. but he should be superheroes, but just not the Green Lantern. <laughs> He's yeah. brilliant, but Fair not point. as the Green Lantern. That no. was a flop. Yeah, it. that Ryan is a Reynolds movie I am on... Green Lantern. Can that Plus be the blamed outfit on the actor anyway. or the script that they gave him? Yeah, I'd say I would blame him. I think it was the script. I really think it was the script. I didn't really want him either. I love him as Deadpool. He's a great Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I honestly think it was a script, though, because the script was really poor. I mean, I don't know what they yeah, were doing when they wrote that. I mean, maybe also, they were having a, having a nap or something. Yeah. Also, and yet it's still there. somehow better than that old Fantastic Four movie from the 90s. Oh! No, oh, I love the Fantastic Four movie. Sorry. No, no, not, 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 the, not, not the new Fantastic Four movies. This is the oh, old... Oh, not the one with Jessica Alba. Fantastic. No, no, Jessica Alba. I'm like, yeah. how can you bag anything this... with Jessica Alba in no, no. skin tight outfit? This is, I mean, this this is just before not that. Happen, no. I was going to reach through the screen and start pounding you in the head with, with a microphone. No, no, no. Those, those, recent those, ones. Those, those, I know the one he's talking about. Yeah. That was really a bad pile of grade A turd. <laughs> Hey, the the, 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 one, the thing, right? The thing. The guy with all the rocks is a dude in a Ninja Turtle suit with rocks glued to the outside of it, painted yellow. Yeah. Okay. That, that was it, the that was the thing. It was just like, what the hell? Fantastic. <laughs> that was the beginning of cosplay. Budget fail. Budget level failure. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's almost as bad as Nicolas Cage as Superman. Which I would love to see you know, just for the shits and giggles value. Ghost <laughs> shits and giggles value, Nicolas Cage and Superman. I would love to see that. And there has be to funny. be, a, and there has to be a funny bees moment in there. <laughs> bees. Uh, also, while I'm on the while I'm on the Deadpool thing, um, what I would love for the opening scene of the Deadpool movie is that. Uh, Deadpool's watching um, X Men Origins Wolverine, and they and they see what they did to Deadpool in it. <laughs> no. That'd be so cool. Or, or, or he's playing his video game. That'd be yeah. even better. See, I bought that the other day. Think the, think <laughs> the, 
Uh, I, I remember I was, um, my housemate's got a heap of Deadpool comics that he was flicking through them the other day, and um, there's this shot of Deadpool. That one of the, he flip... the port to the side and flick through the Deadpool, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, he flicks through this page, he goes, this is probably one of my favourite Deadpool moments. And you see Spider-Man and Deadpool in a, in a jet flying along. The oh, Spider-Man's yes. like, where did you get the jet? He's like, Tony Stark. And, it, and you just see the airport with all these fighter jets with I O U Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> Iron just standing there scratching his head. Wait. <laughs> actually, there's actually, well, there's a comics, uh, sorry, a cartoon series called Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. And uh, they uh, actually do Deadpool cameo in it. Nice. There's one of the few good Deadpool cameos. Yeah, I'd love to see Why a Deadpool with movie. Spider-Man, whether it be cartoon... Or movie getting the short end of the stick of late. Yeah, Spider-Man. what is it with the old Spider-Man cartoon yeah. where he's spider swinging off clouds? Oh god! <laughs> but that's just so cool. Never Let's defy the laws of gravity <laughs> and show the kids that we can just shoot rope up into the air and swing. Because physics, yay! <laughs> I wonder how many kids jumped off the house from rope I've up in the air and hope it's um... stuck. Me, my girlfriend, probably far. Oh. Not enough to not enough to reach the Darwin Awards. No. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend love Deadpool, so like we'll randomly be watching a comic, or and uh, or we'll just randomly talking, and somehow we'll get on a Deadpool, and well, I can't say the word we use, but sounds... something Deadpool is famous for saying for, and it's not Chemi Chenons. It sounds kinky. <laughs> yeah, I bet you've got a Deadpool saying. outfit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. She's online, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, I need to be careful what I say now. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> on the note, I, whoops, there goes the foot in the, in the mouth. So. On the note of Spider Man, I'm um, going um, to shift gears a bit, keeping it superheroes. Um, first Iron Man movie, bad guy at the end of that, the Iron Monger versus the Rhino from the end of Spider-Man. I know he only had like 13 seconds worth of screen time. And thrown in as a wild card, Kane from the end of from Robocop 2. Oh, God. Those three are thrown into a cage, Ooh. the cage is shook up, and they're thrown out across the ground. Who would win in that fight? Me, because I'd ride them all and get them all killed. <laughs> <laughs> and they can go splat. <laughs> Sorry. I'm terrible. I'm not vindictive or yeah. or anything. I just... Yeah. <laughs> no one's... So what you're saying is... <laughs> Why would they leave? What you're saying is DC would write for Marvel characters and kill them all off. I see how it is. They would just hire George R. R. Martin. <laughs> Probably, yeah. You have to work away him back eventually, but <laughs> that's all the fun. <laughs> Uh, it's time travel, isn't it? That's yeah. what the X Men. <laughs> I'm Mongo, Rhino, Kane. Who would win, David? Hawk. Whatever I want to call you this time, I don't know. Um, Sad. Honestly, I'd have to put my money on Kane. Really? Rhino and. Okay, which version of Kane are we talking? When he's all happy and dosed up on Nuke, or when he's going absolutely batshit insane because he's running out? Run out. Because Money's on Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Up until the point he runs out of nuke, then, yeah, Rhino has a chance. As soon as the nuke goes bye-bye, there goes the planet. Uh, I, I, I love it how <laughs> everyone's like, Iron Monger, giant robot suit that could fly. Nah, he's got nothing. Just He just dies and goes away. <laughs> uh, it's not even there. <laughs> so... The Rhino had like three seconds worth of screen time, and like, yeah, he just just he, he'll win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then there's Kane. Kane just beats them all. Uh, okay, how about Battle of the Masters? You, you, you've got to love the the whole idea of having a Rhino horn with some head on. <laughs> he just gets down on all fours. He's running around with a head on his horn. Uh, <laughs> and once you kill a Rhino, you can sell the epic. horn for money. <laughs> wow. Yeah, true. Too soon. Dark. Too soon. It's also supposed to be a good aphrodisiac, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was just... right I'm going to casually anyway. walk away from that <laughs> and over to a battle between Martok from Star Trek and Braytek from Stargate. Who would win in that one? 
Martok from Star Trek. What is that? It's a Klingon dude that was one of the sort of ah, the Grand right. Master Klingon. warrior types. Nah, Klingons are too uh, emotional. He'd be dead in a second. Yeah, Bray Taker. Bray right. Taker might take a bit of a beating for all of 30 seconds, at which point the old Wily Fox part kicks in. And the next thing you know, we've got one dead Klingon. Yeah. He's... Then there won't be any more Klingons on the starboard bow. Wow. <laughs> Leaving that alone. <laughs> Okay, we've got... Strong. <laughs> yeah, oh. a quarter is a really bad song. Wrong for so many reasons. <laughs> actually, at the same what time, it's what so funny. Sid right. and that is the Sid Nova actually sung that to um, Vic and the cast of Star Trek and Tim Hughes, mm. and they laughed. Nice. Also got Grant in a to do his best. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, last but not least, four minutes left... Defiant versus Normandy SR2. So, Mass Effect 2 Normandy, I think it is. Um, might be... Yeah, the second Normandy. Who would win in that? Because that had a fairly lively debate on Facebook, so... Well, it was Normandy versus... What was it again? Uh, Defiant from Star Trek. <laughs> which version Normandy? Yeah, which Normandy? Uh, Normandy SR2. Defiant. Defiant. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Defiant. And, <laughs> and if we're going SR2, which version of SR2? Yeah, a lot of the uh, ones to stay. Yeah. The, DC, just so you know, we can't actually hear you properly at the moment. You're breaking Are we up. talking the Alliance mod yeah. or the original Cerberus mod? Um, Leprechauns. Uh, okay. I don't actually have an answer to that because I haven't played Mass Effect, so... I'll let you guys come to the decision on that one. But you've got... I'm still going to go Defiant over no matter what. Oh, I think we just lost... Okay. We've lost yeah. DC. Yeah, we knew this was a possibility. Yeah, well... <laughs> after, got... the shots, after the shots of the fight at DC, I'm surprised he said. <laughs> All right. Now, if if we're going to be honest with this challenge, if we're talking an upgraded Cerberus equivalent SR2, then I'd say it has a chance. Okay. Yeah, just, it has just to be the... both, both sheep, ships at maximum potential. Put it that way. So... Which makes it which makes it the Cerberus model because they took a whole bunch of the stuff that made the Cerberus model fantastic out in the Alliance variant. Yeah. Like the giant. Freaking cannon. Yeah, the Thanix cannon. That went bye bye. That was amazing. Yeah, in- off chance anyone can hear it, Skype is pinging because DC dropped out. Uh, we've got two minutes left. So, have you guys come to a decision yet? Which one wins? Well, if we're talking we're Cerberus say- SR2 versus Defiant, I say Defiant, but it's a bloody close fight. Yeah. Defiant. But both ships will be really badly damaged. Yeah. Okay, well, they had a really good discussion on the Facebook page for Defiant versus the Normandy, so jump on over to the Facebook page, go to the photos, and then albums, look for verses, and one of the most recent ones you'll see, Defiant versus Normandy. There's actually a really good discussion between um, Salvador Ligonia, God, I hope I'm not butchering these names, Wow, the, this next name is pretty... I'm pretty sure it's Klingon. Tayuk Mazio? Close enough to Klingon for me. And... Uh, Lachlan Hutchinson. I think that's how you say it. Um, so, yeah, so... That sounds like a normal name. Yeah, that one sounds <laughs> like a normal name, which is weird. Okay. Anyway, we're in the last 40 seconds, so I am going to start the outro and... We can all start saying our goodbyes. I shall see you guys in the next episode. Um, I'll let David and Stuart say their goodbyes. Uh, thank you for everyone listening, one. If you wish to follow me on Twitter, at Takua16. David? Well, thanks for listening in tonight, guys. It's been a blast as, as per normal. Look forward to doing this again with you all. And have a good week.
Yep, and I shall see you guys in the next podcast.